You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Interconnected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Interconnected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. You will also realize that we are more alike than we are different, so we should use that to lift each other up as opposed to tearing each other down. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. My name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board-certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am from Florida and currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. So we are in in the month of September. First off, I would like to uh, give my thoughts and prayers to uh, those who are affected by 9-11 since today is 9-11. Our monthly observations are Americana Month, Baby Safety Month, Chicken Month, Courtesy Month, Honey Month, Italian Cheese Month, Blueberry Popsicle Month, Save Your Photos Month, Self-Improvement Month, and Suicide Prevention Month. This evening, we are going to focus on suicide prevention. And I have the pleasure of having special guest, Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams. And Virginia Lee Williams was born and raised on a farm in rural Minnesota. She's lived in many places, including Missouri, Florida, Atlanta, Chicago, and now for the last 15 years, Cincinnati. But she says she calls Delta Airlines her home as she travels a lot for her job. She started her career as a broadcaster, a radio news and talk show host, and transitioned into sales and marketing roles in various high-tech industries. She currently manages a business unit for a Austin, Texas-based software company. On June 9th, 2014, she lost her husband, Keith, by suicide. He was 51. They were married for 21 years together. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, and, and please just call me Virginia. Um, it's it's good to be here with you, and, and I have to say I had no idea there were so many um, um, months of recognition for different things. It was very interesting to hear that at the top of the call. Yes, I. Uh, so funny story. Well, I'm I'm a very quirky person, but um, <laughs> I um, <laughs> there's probably a lot more things. But there was there's this national day calendar. So I have this calendar that has like every day has something on it, and. Um, it has also has monthly observations. So I used to do like all the days uh, observations, but that got to be too much. So I, I, I definitely do the monthly observations and I try to 
you know, see what the monthly observations are and try to tailor, you know, my guests to what's going on, you know, during the month. So, um, but this is a very, this is a very special month, of, a month this near and dear to my heart, uh, as I'm a very strong advocate for suicide prevention, which got me uh, into the field of psychiatry, really got me um, interested in that field. So, um, so yeah, it's something, it's something fun and I will say I have probably gained a few pounds because of the food um, months or the food days, but that's okay because I say I'm <laughs> supposed to because that's what the calendar says. So there you go. <laughs> if you could, if you could give a, um, I know I, I talked briefly a little bit about yourself, but if you could give a, more of a background about yourself. Oh well, I think you covered it quite well. Um, I think as I was listening to you you know, read the little bit of my bio, um, it was sort of a shocker even to me to, to hear the moment in time in my life when, you know, I lost my husband. Um, and I think it sort of feeds mm-hmm. into how people, you know, we look at each other on the outside and we might see um, job success or other life success or things that people are doing uh, that seem very interesting, um, while all along sometimes behind the scenes there are things that, you know, are happening and going on and we don't always know. And um, I think when I lost my husband by suicide, it, it really was a manifestation of that reality for me and for a lot of people around him who didn't know that he suffered. Um, so I don't know that I have a whole lot more to say about myself from what you said, um, just that I'm, you know, I'm okay. happy to be here. I, I candidly wish I didn't have to be. I wish None of us had to be, but this is important work that you and others are doing, and, and I'm trying to do what I can as a, a lay person who has experienced this and, and volunteer where I can and, and provide advocacy and um, education as I'm gaining it myself and, and candidly just awareness to uh, mental health and stigma and, and suicide and suicide prevention, um, and not only ways that we can help and support those who are you know battling mental health conditions, but when this does happen, what sorts of things that we can do and understand as we support those who are left behind. Um, I remember the first uh, suicide gathering I attended through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and I heard this moniker called a suicide loss survivor. And I thought, wow, I'm one of those, and I'd never even heard of that before. So there's a whole journey, you know, that those who are left behind go through as well, which I'm, I'm sure we'll get to during this call. Yeah, and, it, it, you know, you can't see somebody on the outside. You can't judge a book by its cover, and that can go either way, you know, for negative reasons or positive reasons. Um, I think many times, I, I was actually talking to a coworker uh, about this today, how we, you know, we put on this mask, and sometimes that mask gets so heavy and you get tired of putting it on um and there you know you never really know what someone is going through um and it's it's tough because you you know you ask questions as well you start kind of replaying things in your mind well when they did this or was that a sign or you know what i'm saying or could i have said this or could i have said that and in in the so the survivor you know is left with a lot of questions, with a lot of um, emptiness, in a sense, uh, you know, a void that is it's hard to fill. So I would be interested in, you know, first of all, thank you so much for even coming on here and talking about this, as I know it's a tough subject. Uh, and so I, I really do appreciate your strength, your vulnerability, your courage as a survivor to uh, talk about talk about this and I think we should talk about it more you know moving forward it used to be such a, a taboo subject and I think in some instances it still is a taboo subject you know I, I remember when I was um, interviewing for my residency and my training and I talked about uh, I think wanting to um, my interest in suicide prevention. I remember a particular person that was interviewing me saying, well, you know, suicide is not that common. So, and that really stuck with me because I was like, well, how common does, should it be before, you know, it should be something that you're interested in preventing. So right. it's time for us to take a break. 
I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about continue talking about suicide awareness and prevention. Stay tuned. Sensitive, beautiful, feminine, and devotional. These are just some of the words to describe the art of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg, creator of the website IsisRising.net. Mr. Berg's paintings are designed to inspire and awaken the ancient goddess within. He feels that artists have an important role to play in changing the patriarchal world we live in, with a unique ability to create a visual image that can inspire viewers to reinvent themselves. These feminine images create a visual connection to a woman's primal roots, her relationship to nature, and her goddess-based spirituality. Both men and women can benefit from a deeper respect and understanding of what it means to be a woman in attunement to her inner being. Go to IsisRising.net to view the works of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg and be inspired. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anyone has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is Suicide Prevention Month, and this evening I have the pleasure of having special guest Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams, and uh, who lost her husband to suicide on June 9, 2014. So I wanted to spend this uh, segment uh, talking about your life with your, your it's wonderful, wonderful 20, 21 years, you said, uh, with your husband. Can you kind of talk about your life with your husband? Sure. Uh, we were married 21 years together, 23 years, and um, he was a great guy. He was sort of the, you know, one of these people when something like this happens, you hear, boy, that was the last person I ever would have thought, right? So mm-hmm. very kind, smart, gentle, um, had a cornucopia of interests uh, that ranged from, you know, art to conspiracy theories to outer space to, uh, stock options to you name it. Uh, mm-hmm. He had a passion for aviation and tennis. He was wildly intelligent, a, a real thinker. And I think one of the things that's you know probably stuck out most about my husband is how he just put everyone first. He was a very kind, gentle spirit. And I remember calling his psychiatrist after he died, and she said, "I just want you to know something. You know, your husband was one of the most gentlemanly, kind men I've ever met in my life." And I think that really says something. Um, so we had, you know, a, a good 23 years together. And we were, uh, you know, did a lot of traveling and had a lot of common interests in sports and um, food and wine and all kinds of things. And he was always very supportive of me and my career. Um, he used to always say, you know, you're the kite, I'm the string. He was really that secret sauce that I had. Uh, behind the scenes. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, which of course made it very difficult when that was gone, but we got Mm -hmm. married at age 30. So we had both sort of had kind of a life, if you will, before, before we got married, we never had any children. And that was, was by design. Um, And I think there was only one time that I ever wished that we would have, and it was after, after he died. Uh, And I Mm -hmm. thought, wow, it's, it's it's all gone, you know, but Mm -hmm. uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful man. Okay. 
And can you talk some about the mental illness that he went through? Sure. Uh, he was, you know, I had seen what I now know to be, and I'm sure we'll talk about signs, but what mm-hmm. I now know to be sort of signs that there was a problem. Uh, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And right. um, there was a history of mental health issues in his family. And uh, so, you know, we had some awareness around that, um, but it was, it never really manifested itself with Keith. Uh, there were times when I could see that life stressors uh, were very difficult for him sometimes, but he was always mm-hmm. a, a steady rock. And I just never saw anything. And then it was, we had a series of sort of life events that took place uh, around 2011 and he was dealing with 2011, 2012. And we were dealing with uh, his, his, his brother, his only sibling was diagnosed with cancer and his mm. father was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, I lost a job. We had a couple of very close friends die. And in a period you know, of time, there were a lot of things that took place. And long story short, in um, about June of 2012, few months before that, um, I noticed he just wasn't himself. And again, okay. I look back at certain things and go, wow. Uh, but I, he had made a suicide attempt and I happened to be home and I just had a weird feeling. And so I walked through the house and uh, found him making this attempt and I convinced him to stop and I immediately got him to a mental health facility. And mm. um, that's when he was diagnosed with the severe depression and, and bipolar. And that okay. led to a two year, a very difficult two year journey. And even after that, I, you know, he became, he was medicated. He was getting some therapy. Um, but even then I, I never thought that this would happen. Um, and again, I, I look back and you talked about this at the start of the call of how you see signs and, and when this does happen, um, it's the horrible, tremendous guilt that you deal with and, and lots of unanswered questions, right? Mm-hmm. And so I've learned a lot since then, and I've often said I, I wish I had known even a little bit then of, of what I, I know now. Uh, but I can't change things, and I can't look back. I can only try and take my experience and what I've learned and try to help other people. Yeah. And you, and, and you mentioned um you know, um, in your bio that his death, you've, you've had, lo- you know, other losses in your life, other deaths in your life, and, and this particular death shattered your world, and, and it was a different type of feeling than when, than your other mm-hmm. losses. Yes, and I think, you know, I had, I had lost a brother to a drunk driver in 2006, and my mother died at a young age of 61, two years after that, and just a series of close family deaths. And six months before my husband died, his brother, his only sibling, um, died, um, succumbed to his cancer. And mm. there's just something, though, um, you know, each everybody's death experience is personal and unique, and I would never try to understand somebody else's experience. I can only speak to mine. But for me personally, my husband's death by suicide was like nothing I had ever experienced. And I think in part, uh, the suddenness of it, the unexpectedness of it, you know, you know, I, we could talk for an hour about some of the things people have said to me after he died, but you know, there were people who said, well, you should have seen this coming, or if you had been home, this wouldn't have happened, those sorts of things. Oh. Right. And so you just are dealt with so much guilt and, yeah. um, you might intellectually, you know, I intellectually knew that, it wasn't my fault, but emotionally I couldn't get my heart around that. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think a big part of it is there's no, I read a book not long after my husband died and I would really recommend it. There's several of them, but I would recommend this one to your readers. And it's called no time to say goodbye. I can't recall the author right now, but it's written by a woman whose husband was a renowned cardiologist and, um, died by suicide. And she speaks to the fact that you don't get that opportunity to say goodbye and you're left with a lot of unanswered questions. So I think that goes to the heart of what made this uh, so difficult. Okay. I'm definitely going to check that out. I haven't heard of that book. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, 
And when we come back, we are going to talk about mental illness and its connection to suicide. We'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is Suicide Prevention Month, and this evening I have the pleasure of having special guest, Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams, who lost her husband to suicide on June 9th, 2014. And in this segment, I wanted to focus a little bit more. We started talking about it the last segment about mental health and, and, and how that connects with suicide. Can you talk some about knowing now, you know, um, how mental health and the importance of mental health and and, uh, how mental illness and mental health is connected with suicide. Sure. I'll, I'll, you know, share again from my own experience and what I've learned knowing that I am a lay person. Um, Mm -hmm. But one of the things I learned as I got involved with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention or AFSP is, uh, you know, suicide People with men, not everybody with a mental health condition, right, will will you know die by suicide. But mm-hmm. often, and I think the statistics are in the upper 90s through a lot of research that those who die by suicide are uh, dealing with a diagnosed and or undiagnosed or untreated mental health condition, whether that be you know and you're the expert here, but whether that be depression or bipolar both mm-hmm. anxiety, you know, whatever. And it, it is an illness. And I think that is a key component here that we need to, as a society, understand that it's an illness. And as cliche as to say it's an illness like a heart disease or lung disease, but it truly is. But it's, it's a hidden illness, right, that, uh, as you said, people can wear a mask and, and hide for an awful long time that you sometimes can't do with other illnesses. And right. um, I think, so what I learned is that, you know, this happens sort of when, when stressors exceed the current coping abilities of somebody with a mental health condition. So when I shared with you in, you know, the months before, the year before my husband died, everything that, that we had been going through in terms of, you know, his, his only sibling dying and illness in the family and other deaths and job losses and all these sorts of things. And I, I maybe was living in a fallacy myself after he got out of the mental health facility uh, he always would tell me, you know, I don't ever, I don't want to stay on these medicines. And I'd say, you have to, you know, it's, it's 
just no different than if somebody has to have chemotherapy or, you know, blood pressure medicine. But the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is they, they made him a bit of a different person, right? And, and that, was, mm-hmm. that was always the challenge is finding the mixture of those medicines that, that would work. But I think right. the biggest thing was the stigma and him not wanting to uh, talk about it with anybody else, wanting to keep it a secret. When I had to commit him, he begged me not to even tell his family, and I honored his wish. And candidly, I wish I hadn't. I'm not sure if it would have changed the outcome, but his family didn't have the opportunity to provide him the support that um, they, I know they would have. And it just further fed sort of the secret that we were holding. And I, I will never, ever do that again. And I would encourage everybody, if you're going through something like this, Uh, to seek help and to let family and trusted friends know because it's nothing to be ashamed of. And there is help. And, um, you know, in our case, when someone Keith died, you know, everybody was shocked because they they didn't know what was happening. But I saw the the months leading to and after his brother's death, you know, I saw things that I now know should have put triggers up for me. You know, he would, something about going to church and he would, I remember him saying to me, church can't help me anymore. And he got more paranoid about certain things and he stopped doing things that he loved. Um, and when I would encourage or push, then I, you know, probably, you know, I seemed like I was nagging him about it, right? Which led into a whole different dialogue. Right. Um, and so there were just a lot of new challenges, you know, he slept more, he didn't get up, he was, I was up by 6 a.m. and at noon I was having to wake him up. And I kind of, even though, you know, we'd been through what we had gone through with his treatment and the medicines, I kind of wrote it off to, well, this is, we're going through a tough time. You know, it just, Uh I just didn't know. And, Uh um, and he always said to me that the medicines uh, helped him take away his suicidal thoughts. And, and I, I believe that, and that helped me sleep a little better. But uh, there were just all these, you know, small sort of signs that kind of compounded. And now when I look back, I go, whoa, these these were indicators. But I, I didn't know. And, you know, you, you mentioned I was the expert. But, you know, I am a firm believer that, like, nobody is an expert, right? I, I think that... Uh, mm-hmm. You, we, we are experts of our, for our, ourselves, and sometimes that's questionable, <laughs> you know. Um, I, have a, yeah, I have a lot of knowledge and, you know, a, a wide knowledge base and things, but I think, you know, people, lay people, as you put it, <laughs> you can gain a lot from them. And, th- and this is why, you know, that's, this is why I like to talk. I don't like to just talk to, quote, unquote, experts and professionals and things, because not everybody, like, everybody has value. And I think your personal experience actually is more valuable than me coming on here and shouting out statistics or stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. I think a lot can be gained from your experience. And I think many times life experience is the the greatest teacher. You know, the stuff that you go through helps you throughout your life and, and it helps guide your life it's, it's there's no textbook to life so um so i yeah i i sit back and i and i let people speak and tell their stories because their stories are very important and, and they can be healing and they can and they can help and it makes those people the quote unquote experts the ones who have actually been in the trenches and and have gone through it so, um, it, I appreciate you calling me the expert, but, you know, we're here mm-hmm. having a conversation and you're just as much of an expert, if not more than I am. So, but I, I do appreciate that, but I, that's not going to stop me from continuing the fight and continuing to break down these barriers, uh, and, and the stigma. So I appreciate you even, even bringing that up. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about suicide prevention and awareness. We'll be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Ugmat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. 
born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hey, guys. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866 866- Four five one one four five one. Again, that is eight six six four five one one four five one. It is Suicide Prevention Month, and I have the pleasure of having special guest Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams, who lost her husband to suicide on June 9th, two thousand fourteen. So I wanted to give you a chance to uh, finish the thought that you were going to say at the end of the last segment. Sure. I I sort of felt the conversation was going a little bit into the stigma around Mm -hmm. mental health and the stigma around even talking about it and talking about saying the word suicide and talking about suicide prevention. I mean, this is difficult stuff, right? And I I really, it, it sounds simplistic to say, but it's very difficult to do. And I think that is one of the most important things that we can do as part of advocacy is is doing what we can to to erase that stigma and to make it okay to talk about these things and to encourage us to listen to each other um, mm-hmm. and to take seriously when people are are reaching out. You know, I remember as a kid growing up on the farm in Minnesota, and I had a grandmother who battled some mental health issues, and and a lot of times people, you know, would talk about. Um, you know, people are weak or they got to just, you know, suck it up. And especially growing up on a farm or if anybody's, you know, been raised by German grandparents, you know, it's sort of <laughs> like you just deal with things. Right. And yeah. um, I, I, I think that, you know, even in my husband's case, we had experience with it on um, in his family and he still didn't want his own family to know. Mm. And I just look at that now and think, wow. Um, And so, you know, programs like this, programs that the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and other great organizations out there, you know, things that they're doing to try to encourage people to sort of speak up. And we have a phrase in the AFSP community called seize the awkward, right? Because it's Mm -hmm. an awkward and difficult thing to talk about. Uh, But it's really important that we do and that there are now, you know, a lot of tools and a lot of ways that, that people can get help. And, you know, I found myself in sort of an interesting quandary not long ago because I hit the, the days leading up to my, the fifth anniversary of my husband's death. And I had a new company with a new boss and I was really struggling. It was as though on this fifth year, um, it hit me in a way that Mm -hmm. it hadn't hit me before. And Mm -hmm. long story short, I woke up one morning and I was paralyzed. I thought I, I, I couldn't get out of bed and I tried to get out of bed and go to work. And I thought I need, 
I, I was really struggling. I thought, mm-hmm. what do I do? Because I have to do my job, right? And right. I wanted to tell my boss, listen, here's what's going on. And I, I really, I'm really struggling today. And I'd really like to just not work today. And I thought, but I can't do that. He's going to, you know, they'll think I'm weak. They'll think I can't handle my job, you know, whatever that might be. And I stopped and I said to myself, Virginia, you are doing the very thing that you're advocating people don't do. <laughs> and right. so I decided I had to lean in to what I'm trying to encourage and trying to help people with. And, and I called them and I said, here's the deal. And I told them. And, of course, very understanding and very, very supportive. Um, that's not always the case and not everybody has that, that situation. Um, but I just think the more that we can talk about this and encourage people, it's just so critical. Um, and -hmm. I think for men especially, and I don't know the statistics, but you know, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. And I think it's highest among middle-aged white men and, um, which is the, the demographic my, my husband, you know, fit into. And um, I just lost my train of thought. I don't know where I was going with that, except that, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. We, we just have to make it okay. And I, I remember it was not long after my husband died that I woke up one morning and there was the news on my phone that Robin Williams had died of suicide. And I remember saying to myself, oh, my gosh, now maybe people will understand. Here was the smiliest, happiest, funniest, seemingly, mm-hmm. most, you know, top of the world guy. And here right. it even happened there, right? And right. so with these right. celebrity deaths by suicide, there's been, there's been more awareness and I think it's caused the conversation. And I think we can seize those opportunities on a larger scale, you know, to try to help people. But I, I don't know what the secret sauce is around erasing the stigma, except frequency around these kind of conversations and using any small opportunity that we have to help somebody, um, you know, but hopefully the compounding effect will will ultimately have a positive impact. Yeah, and I I think that is the answer, the sauce. You know, the secret sauce is is really just listening and and like you said, having the conversation. There's no magic formula. You know, there's all kind. There could be all kinds of algorithms and things out there to say, oh, you should look for this. Like like you you know you mentioned people telling you, well, you should have seen this coming, or you know, I mean, it's just you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. And mm-hmm. you don't, you can't, it's even hard for me to, to even put in words. I mean, it, it's, you, you just learn, like I said, learn through your, through your life experience. It, it's not any, you know, anything that, I don't know. So, so people will will say may say that uh, I've heard people say that suicide is a selfish act, right? And mm. and that just that just baffles me. You know, like oh, that's so selfish. How could you do that and and to other people? But I, I encourage people to think about it in a different way. Many times, people who are struggling, you know, with severe depression. They're actually thinking that they are a burden to other people. So they're not That's being right. selfish. They're being selfless. They're like, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm a burden to this person. So I, it's better if I remove myself so that I'm not a burden to other people. So that's not selfish. It's a, it's a distorted way of thinking, you know, but that's not, a, it's not selfish. And it's just, you know, we, we have to really, educate people and 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 again let them know that mental illness is medical illness is all it's all something that's not balanced within your system and just like you that's would, right you, would, you know yeah just like you would you know if your blood pressure was too high or too low you do something about it. if your sugars were too high or too low you would do something about it so you just really have to think about that. And I think us c- continuing to have the conversation and talk about it. And I think the celebrities and, the, you know, putting it out there on the platform really helps as well. It's time for us to take a break. 
I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about spirituality and life after suicide. We'll be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is Suicide Prevention Month, and I have the pleasure of having special guests Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams, who lost her husband to suicide on June 9th, 2014. Well, I have a question from a listener, and the question is, I want to thank you for sharing your experience with us. How have you, how have you found any joy through the pain? Uh, very good question. Um, and to be real candid, and I, I will be, it, it's been very, very difficult. Uh, because I really did not feel that I deserved joy or that I deserved happiness because I was wrought with such tremendous guilt. And sometimes that guilt was fed by, you know, comments and things that people would say to me. But on the flip side, I was, you know, lifted up by, by many, many people who loved me and cared about me and, and tried to help me even if they couldn't fully understand it. Um, it took a long time. I would say it's really just been in the last year, year and a half that I felt I had the right to joy. I felt guilty okay. if I smiled. I felt guilty if I was having a good time, you know? Um, so I think time is part of it. Um, mm-hmm. I've been able to find joy in part by being able to finally look back at um, the positive memories of how Keith lived and, and the good times that we had versus focusing only on how he died. Um, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention Community that I've been a part of has been helpful to um, find joy again. I've made new friends. Um, I have found a community of people who, who understand and I know and have helped me see that it's okay to find joy and, and be happy again. Um, and I also know, again, cliche-ish, but I also know that, you know, Keith would want me to be joyful and happy. I feel like... If I want to honor his life, I have to find joy and happiness. Um, hmm. He would not accept anything other than that. And it wasn't, it was a few years, a couple of years after he died, and I was still going through some files, and I found a, um, a note that he had scribbled on a random piece of paper. And it said, uh, Virginia is my angel who keeps me going. 
Mm. And I thought, wow, well, I got to keep going, right? And so Mm -hmm. um, it's just a lot of little things. Um, But I I won't lie, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult. And everybody's journey is is different. And for me, um, joy has often come in a strange way. You know, when I started sharing my story on on Facebook and doing other things, I have so many people that I've known in my life who privately reached out to me and told me that they've struggled with depression. Uh, one woman who I used to babysit for told me she had attempted suicide. I never knew all of this. Mm-hmm. Is that joyful? No. But did I receive and feel joy that by sharing my experience might help some other people, including unknowingly to me, people that I'm close to and I didn't even know? So I guess there's joy also in some of the the new discoveries and, and the gifts, oddly, that this terrible experience has, has brought my way. Yeah, and and this, and this is exactly what I was saying. Is is someone that has gone through that? You know, you say that makes people feel comfortable letting you know what they're going through. Some people who might not even come to some like a professional, right? Like me, because they still, d- right. despite the fact that I'm in the mental health field, there's still that there's still stigma and there's still shame with mental illness. So, someone. I, I've had to realize, like, not to to take things personally if people are not as open with me because they don't really know me and they, and they don't know what I, you know, my life or or if I can even relate to them. And so I, I find that, you know, I encourage people to to try and find communities where there are people who have got nobody has the exact same story or an exact same experience, but that people have similar experiences and in similar ways of, of, uh, of dealing with experiences, uh, that you could find some healing through that. You know, I, I often tell people, you don't have to be a therapist to be therapeutic. You know, you, there's so many people out there, you know, who are therapeutic, who are not, who don't have certain letters behind their name or who are not sitting in an office with these degrees and things like that. You don't have to be a therapist to be therapeutic. And, you you know, you can't save the world. And I, 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 embrace, I find joy in people who are able to reach the unreachable just through experience and connection in that way and so that brings me to uh spirituality so how how do you think spirituality has helped you in this process oh so you know you said at the top of the show i was you know raised in a rural farming community in minnesota in a town of 500 people and uh, I lived in a town where the Lutheran church was on one side of the railroad tracks and the Catholic church was on the other. And I lived on the Lutheran side. So I was raised a, a Lutheran and uh, I still believe and profess that as my faith. And so I, you know, I, I have turned often to, to scripture um, to okay. try to understand this. Uh, I, I read, you know, devotionals off and on. I've talked to pastors. Uh, one thing that we did at my husband's funeral is I told the pastor, I said, we're not going to hide behind this. Uh, we're not going to put suicide and mental health on the pedestal at his funeral, but we're not going to pretend that this didn't happen. And, Mm -hmm. and he went so far as to in this, you know, small town with a couple hundred people in, in our church to ask people to raise their hands if they had themselves experienced mental health conditions or knew somebody who did and a startling amount of, you know, hands went up in the church and I, I guess it's not a spiritual thing, but I, I yeah, think it is. for me, bringing that all together is really important. Um, I, I have no doubt where Keith is, you know, there are age old mm-hmm. beliefs that people who die by suicide don't go to heaven. Um, right. I spoke to my pastor, you know, a lot and I said, you know, was, was God there with Keith? And, and I really struggled with all of that, but Mm-hmm. I I know he was, and I I just hold on to that faith. And sometimes 
that is the only thing that got me through the night and day is is my my belief in in God in in knowing that I didn't know how I was going to get through this, but that I would get through it and, and that he would help me. And without that, I I think it'd be extremely difficult, and it already is, right? Yeah. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to wrap up. Stay tuned. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. It is Suicide Prevention Month, and I've had the pleasure of having special guests, Mrs. Virginia Lee Williams, who lost her husband to suicide in 2014. And I'd like to wrap up with a quote uh, from Abraham Lincoln. And it states, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. Again, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. So it's all a matter of perspective. You know, I hope that can encourage right. people who may be in the thorns and thinking more about the thorns and thinking about the roses. Um I'd like to, to thank you so much, Virginia, for, for doing this again. I know it's a, it's a tough subject. Uh, hopefully this has been healing for you as it has been. I know it has been for me just listening to your story. Um, you know, you, you sent me a video um, that was made about your husband, and it was a really beautiful video, and it, and it just really showed just how great of a spirit that he had. So I was glad that you even shared that with me, and I'm glad that you've shared this uh your story with me and i'll continue to pray and and for you and, and your healing um i'd like to give you the opportunity for any kind of final thoughts or projects you're working on or anything you want to speak about sure I, first of all I, I, again I, the whole purpose of this conversation right is to encourage people who are struggling uh, with with any kind of mental health um Challenges to please seek help. Um, and there are people who care, there are resources out there, and there is help available. I would also encourage those who encounter, you know, people who are struggling to provide support. If you don't know what to do, find somebody who might know what to do. If you encounter somebody like me who has lost somebody by suicide, uh, be gentle with them and encourage them to be gentle with themselves. And if you don't know what to say because it's uncomfortable, it's okay to say, I don't know what to say. 
I had someone say <laughs> right. that to me, and it was one of the best things somebody said to me. And, I, mm-hmm. and so that was very, very helpful. Uh, finally, I would encourage people to um, seek out the resources through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, so AFSP.org. Um, I have a Facebook page called Keith Warriors for Hope, which is where I post d- different things that could be helpful for uh, people on the subject. If you are in a community that has a um, AFSP out of darkness walk, I encourage you to participate. This is an annual walk in cities across the United States where we uh, raise awareness and funds for um, erasing the stigma around mental health and for suicide prevention efforts. And then if you have lost someone by suicide in cities and around the world on November 23rd every year, um, is designated as Suicide Loss Survivor Day. And there's a gathering in many, many cities around the world where you can come together with people like me who have lost loved ones by suicide. And it is the most healing um, thing that I ever did post-suicide um, loss. So I would really encourage you to do that. And um, I mentioned the book at the top of the hour, No Time to Say Goodbye. Uh, is a really, really helpful book for anybody who has lost somebody by suicide as well. I don't know the author. I'm not pitching for any reason, except I found it very, very helpful for me. And it helped me realize that I wasn't alone in in my journey. Okay. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking that up now. Uh, no time to say goodbye. Surviving the sui- the surviving the suicide of a loved one. It's Carla Fine. So that's yeah, Carla that's Fine. It. No time to say goodbye, Carla Fine. Amazon is great. Thank you so much yeah. for, again, for uh, doing the show tonight. Um, thanks, everyone, for entering this journey of the mind, body, and spirit with me. I hope everyone has a great week. Love one another. Hug one another. Listen to one another. And always stay connected. Take care. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.